Join the conversation round the clock. O only on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Daily is today. Daily is today. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Today's show's number one talk station, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Yes, we're back on Daily Today. 7.32 is time. And Lagos, you're welcome. I'm Sheriff Quadri. And I'm Jimmy Disu. Good morning. We're good to go. You can watch us live on Facebook. We're also live on YouTube as well. This morning, Nigeria Info 99.3 is how you can watch um, us on those two platforms. Uh, Lagos, let's know what you think about um, the stories we're about to bring you this morning, okay? All right, let's start with our first story. Sharif, Fubara, Nwifru, Zulum, Mutwang, others emerge governor. He has plenty of riders, though. This story is in the Vanguard. Yeah, morning, everybody. Morning again. Uh, this is uh, a summary of um, of what took place, the elections that took place over the weekend. And I'm sure all of you are dying uh, for my reaction. I, I did a bit of that on Saturday. And I don't want to take too much of your time now, you know, at later date today. I'll do a more extensive um, whatever. But you all saw it. I don't think there's anything new. I will tell you, it took a lot of us, <coughs> excuse me, it took a lot of us by surprise. Uh, uh, the, you know, the, uh, especially, especially here in Lagos, you know, the ones that we could see that confronted us. I have never seen anything like it before. Uh, there's nothing new. I'm going to I'm going to say, uh, because it's it's we we already know, you know all of us have made up our minds on which side of the divide we want to be. But I think it's a coming storm. I think it's a coming storm which we can avoid. But I'm more inclined to talk to people about how best they would go through these trying times, uh, um, and leave the fighting to the soldiers that want to do so. Um, you know, in that sense. So that's that's what I'll be doing maybe later today, you know, trying to tell you to look at the times critically and see exactly in his real nature what uh, what we're about to come uh, to confront. But here the story talks about talks about uh, the various governors that have emerged. I'm sure you know you know them. I don't like I said, I don't want to waste too much time on this. Sheriff, not this sheriff. The, <laughs> we, we have a governor called Sheriff. The nine successful governors are Zulom, Abdul Razak, Abiodun, Makinde Oyo, Bala Mohammed, Yahya, Babagana Zulom. Are there two Zuloms? No. It's the same Zulom. Babagana uh, Zulom. Uh, Abdullah Sule, and of course, uh, Sonwulu of Lagos. Yeah, apart from Makinde and B Bala Ahmed, who are of the PDP, the other seven belong to the APC. Okay, they belong to the APC. And um, I'll be very, very honest. The circumstances in which a lot of these governors have emerged is very, very worrying. Very, 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 very worrying. And let me take out a bit, of, you know, just a little bit of time for us to look at, you know, where we are now. These events, these things that happened over, you know, over Saturday have brought a new dimension to everybody's life, except you're not a Nigerian. The ethnicity that was exhibited was unprecedented, far, far above what happened in 1966. Okay? And what it has also done is to bring out the true character of some people that you have known all your life. Kind of hits is on that And that's why I said I'm more, I'm more concerned with how to how to forestall a complete disaster of our country. Okay, I would have my country, you know, more than any other thing. I think I want to join arguments with protagonists, some of the things that we saw. I wish I would love. I wish I would love. But I would need a best for so I'll try that. It's more than it's much more than most people think. I want to learn to the young guy, you know, for, for what he put out there yesterday. We'll take the next one. Yep. Let's go to the uh, conscious paper. This one here that reads, Lady Offense. <laughs> uh, you know, Sheriff, 
I, 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 from what I can see, generally have to have a chance to be able to see the in all of this. These are on your friends. But look what the pastor said. Don't worry about the only electoral friends. Because they have, they have the party. Let's look at this. It says, well, as the ultimate external of the people's sovereign deal and the viability of democracy, with the integrity of electoral deaths. Mm-hmm. It is the best of our sacrament, says, and features the real winner's life, the dictates, he must tell leaders to compromise elections. Democracy not to become a child that does from practical political decisions made mm-hmm. through institutions on the right rather than the choice. Mm-hmm. The following of elections and the acknowledgement that are compiled results in the election. This legitimizes electoral and hinders participatory pursuit in the country. Sadly, winners from the families to the open contest are often determined by the court, not the sole majority. And that has also been the same way. My good friend, the John Tim. To talk about Mahmoud, I'm doing a boss of that. To talk about the family, the offenders to justice, and sanitize this. That in itself is a contradiction of the greatest of the kind. For your love, this is really, really offensive. Okay, and so, I said, okay, and that's the problem we have. Like Nigeria are loosely compromised. All work on that finish up. Okay, assets of corrupt officers and security are not on the block. The hairlings of the town. I don't think taking up the number of people who died from you in the last year. We have a number of people who died to one. Yeah, we're both of me. Some of them are injured. They have been to the point that we dare to speak. I wouldn't know. I don't know. I must say, you know, I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I know at this time, they are very tense. We've all, I have talked about, okay, we've we read that. In Ibadan, or your state, three party supporters were reportedly killed by suspected thugs who invaded the party's campaign office on the eve of the election. Over the years, arrests and prosecution of electoral offenders have not been commensurate with the scale of brigandage. Primarily, it is the police that have this responsibility. You remember you once had the commissioner of police who said he couldn't determine between an adult, I think it was a man in Kano, he, he couldn't determine uh, who is a child. You know, if he sees two, he can't determine if a child is a child or an adult. Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, we saw a lot of kids uh, voting and so on and so forth. Anyway, the long and, you know, the essence of this all is that the, you know, the, the, the point is calling for, for all his worth that electoral officers, the, you know, electoral offenders be persecuted. But the dilemma we have is that everybody seems to be complicit in this crime. When I say everybody, every, every, every sector seems to be represented in, 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 in this crime. And that, that is a big, big problem that we have on our hands. We haven't helped us in Nigeria, in all honesty. Um, what we are seeing, it doesn't look good, but hopefully it can be averted. When we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. Let's go to Vanguard, page 10. Let's leave mm. the punch for now. Let's go take um, page 10 of Vanguard. Um, Oshibajo, go on. Some of the others eulogize Hilda at the Pharisee. I have, haven't had time because of all these turbulent things to pay my condolence to Pastor Wally Adeferasi. I might as well do that publicly here. The Adeferasis are, you know, they are family, Lagos family that, you know, we do have a lot of regard and respect for. And, you know, three pastors, I think, from that family alone. But what occurred to me when I saw this is this was old Nigeria. You know, that was there, Gawan was there, and so on and so forth. You know, the old, real old Nigeria. And I was wondering what could have been going on in their minds as uh, Auntie Hilda de Farassi was lying in state. I-, I wonder what would have been going through their minds. Mrs. Ade Farassi is the wife, or was the wife of the late Justice Ade Farassi in the days when judges were judges. In the days when judges were judges in the days when Lagos, and indeed Lagos was a melting pot, but Nigeria had values. You know, those days are far long gone. Ironically, as I'm trying to put it in perspective in my own head, these days seem to be occurring Mm. at a time when we even had military government. You know, what an irony. And uh, we, we all wish for those days... When people sat, like Mrs. Hilda, Mrs. Adifarasi, I'd like to be corrected, was not even a Nigerian. But it didn't matter. I think she was Jamaican as well. So, but it didn't matter. We didn't have the level of mad ethnicity that we have now. You know, when I, when I, when I sit back, I've been troubled. In, in fact, I've been almost traumatized. When I see people you have known all your life, mm. the kind of bile and hate that emanates from them is mind-boggling. I saw somebody, top a professor, tweeting that we have taught them a lesson on Twitter. You know? 
I've seen, I've seen people post things on Twitter. I've seen them jubilating, doing all kinds of things. And I say to myself, what has happened to this country that we all had? To those who are doing that, let me read a quotation from Patrick Doyle. Hmm. And he says here, gloating is the crudest form of celebration of or affirmation. Gloating is the crudest form of celebration or affirmation. It can be likened to the cackling of baboons at a jungle festival. I don't know what has happened to my country. I don't know what has happened to my friends. I don't know what has happened to even some of my family. You know, all of a sudden we want to make it impossible for us to have one country. It's sad. And Sheriff, yeah. this job we are doing, you are going to need an extra ins life insurance. So the mm. way we are going. Why? Ah, look, look, very long one, Leo. Why? <laughs> me, me have gone Why home are you sending come. me home? <laughs> me, me have gone home and come back. <laughs> See, why? It, 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 I feel so. I feel. I feel restrained because, of course, you know, you have to be careful with the medium, mm. you know. And um, like I said, I don't want to put whatever in the burning fire. But the times ahead are very dark. The times ahead are very dark. You, you see, <laughs> wait. Let's go to the next story. <laughs> let's go to the next story. <laughs> let's go to the next story. Mm. <laughs> Let's take this one here from Daily Trust on page 6. Ramadan, look out for moon tomorrow. Sultan tells Muslims. Well, it's time for Ramadan. I hope that month will bring some peace and peace to, to our nation. Um, because luckily it dovetails into Lent. Uh, so this is a time where we expect um, Nigerians to be completely sober. Uh, you know, it dovetails into Lent. We expect Nigerians to be completely sober. Uh, so the the sultan has urged Muslims uh, to look out for the moon, uh, to look out for the crescent. So I think Ramadan will probably start tomorrow, at most tomorrow, if not later tonight. What do you think? Tomorrow or Thursday. Why Thursday? You don't want to start today? No, today is gone already. Okay, because you are supposed to have <laughs> Ramadan brings it brings it brings it brings me memories as as a child. Yeah. Um, you know, when, of course, when I come from a Muslim family yeah. where I had to go and eat a biscuit or something, and <laughs> you know, I was very, very young, and my father would be insisting that uh, uh, you, you must you must fast. Mm -hmm. Not insisting, insisting like that, but, uh, uh, you know. And so it brings back memories of eating good food and so on and so forth, waking up in the morning to smell the frying of egg and things like that as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. and the sumptuous the sumptuous uh, dinner you'd have. Yeah, I've been to some uh, Ramadan breaks. What, what's it called now? The, the break in the evening. Yeah, the iftar. Uh, iftar. Okay. I've been to some iftars. The food on the table is long from here to the end of that table. Yes, actually, it was a feast. Mm, always. I, I don't know if I, I get invited uh, uh, this year as usual, but COVID just broke my normal pattern of going to my friend's uh, house. Yeah. Uh, yes. And I think politics has added a bit to that too. So that is going to be... <laughs> but the, the <laughs> that's going to be a bit difficult. But it says that uh, the council appeals to endowed Muslims in the country to extend their acts of charity to the less privileged within their neighborhoods during and after the month of Ramadan. Mm. We also admonish traders not to hoard food products or unduly hike the prices of consumer goods during the fasting and you period. see you see that happen a lot well it's going to happen this year there's still no money in circulation i hear uh, though i'm used to using for the past two days i've been trying to transfer a particular sum of money in the bank the network just won't pick up you know so i, I think that i'm not trying to be a doomsday prophet but you might just have a bit of a hike in foodstuffs and what then like they say I went about when they they're already yeah. hikes anyway mm -hmm. I mean, so only only heaven will help us you you uh, back to what I was saying um initially I'm saying it in fits and starts because I need to get my brain settled you know which I'll do at nine um I, I, you know I'd like to appeal to everybody to just take calm but be very very tactical be very very tactical there's a lot of hate going around and guess what it is being recorded because there's always a day after. You know, I keep talking about a day after. Don't join them. 
don't join those who are who for for in fact for all you care, it could be your reply that will get you into trouble. You understand what I'm saying? It could be your reply. Don't join them. Let them have a field day. Nothing lasts forever. That much I will tell you. Let the big girls have a field day. Don't join them. Try and keep the peace. Don't fret, but be on the lookout. Hmm. We're going to take our next story now, this time from the Vanguard. Expulsion of pupil, marvelous Barinada. Uh, why don't they just let this young girl's uh, matter just lie, you know? The Vanguard is writing an editorial about, you know, the lady, um, marvelous Bari Little girl, Barinada. Yeah. Is that mm. that's right, Barinada? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, uh, and, and the newspaper argues that it is the expression of their constitutional rights of, of association. Children under 18 are not eligible to vote. It is the job of the teachers and school authorities to guide school peoples on the limit to which the school environment will permit partisan politics to avoid its negative fallout. The last election in Lagos almost degenerated into a tribal war. While school children were seen singing the praises of particular candidates on assembly grounds, <laughs> this is this is how bad we've gone, I tell you. With the full approval of their teachers, other children perceived on ethnic basis to belong to the opposition parties were often maltreated. There's a lot of there was a lot of that. Uh, when we do the full analysis, we'll we'll get to that someday at, at some point, where you just thought that okay, people from an ethnic um, uh, from an ethnic part, you know, from a part of the country would be responsible for your defeat or, or your, your, your victory. And it's something that needs to be examined thoroughly. Thoroughly. You see, because whether we like it or not, sensitive or not, we have to do a thorough analysis of these things, principally to find out, A, what happened, and B, how we can prevent an incident like that reoccurring. Because it was a very bad, it was a very bad experience. It still is a very bad experience. But we'll get back to it. The paper talks about the case of Miss Marvelous Barry Nada. Okay. And they, they argue that it was impunity taken too far. And of course, we all know what it was. She wrapped her book with an OB, whatever, and she, that she was campaigning for the candidate. And then, and then they, they put in parenthesis against the will of Lagosians. But the question is what is the will of Lagosians? It's difficult to determine. Hmm. It's difficult to determine what the will of the Lagosians were. I, in a case where half the population were prevented from exercising their constitutional rights, how do you ever get to know what their will was? It was there. It was evident. We saw it. I was there from 6 o'clock. We saw the reports coming in. We saw the videos. We saw everything. You know? And, and so they talk about the case of the woman. And the good thing, though, the good thing, though, is that the Lagos State Ministry of Education condemned the principal's action. And that is a good side to it. Uh, and also, it was said that the governor had gone on Arise TV to say he totally condemned it. And he said that, and I quote him here, no leader worth his salt will indeed allow a state to be run by people we cannot even identify. So it is condemnable. I don't know what that statement means by people we cannot even identify. Because that was his teacher. Okay, maybe he was referring to something else. Maybe he was referring to something else, and they got this quote out of context, mm -hmm. because it says, "I totally condemn it." No leader will what he sought to allow is still to be run by people we cannot even identify. Uh, so the vanguard says that okay, fair enough. We commend the government and its organs for responding to this outrage. And I told you here that um, the the commissioner will be up to the task, Mrs. Um, Adefisayo. Thank you for reminding me. Mm. I keep thinking of the nickname. <laughs> <laughs> of the nickname I knew you were going to say. I, 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 I can't can, can, say. I can, say. I can, no, say. Before no, you, no, you, know, you know, the way, as soon as I said commissioner, my mind went to my this my friend, his ESL, and what we used to call him in, uh, in Unilag in those days. Well, I cannot be calling him Tormentor. I'm ah, sorry. Uh, what we used to call him. <laughs> uh, let's laugh a bit. You know, let's just enjoy ourselves a bit. So we they commend the, the organs for responding to this outrage and we... We, we urge them to keep the public informed on actions taken to reassure all that, that to assure all that justice was done for others to learn from this grievous experience. 
And they also expect that uh, Bola Tenobu, is, whose name this impunity was committed, to speak on the matter. People want to hear his take on this. There are so many things we want to hear his take on anyway. Uh, I don't think we've heard his take on what happened in Lagos last weekend, whether he feels it was okay or not. Do we have any reaction on this last election from any of the parties yet? In Lagos? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, we do. So the APC was satisfied with what happened. For the elections, the result, of course, yes. They were satisfied with the elections. The result, yes, they won. Not, so, there's yeah. a difference between the result and the election. I don't think they're concerned about themselves. They're with, just concerned uh, about the result. It's the result, yes. Mm. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so the Vanguard says that we condemn the ethnic baiting, profiling, and intimidation witnessed in Lagos and a few other places during the campaign. These were capable of sparking off inter-ethnic crises. Those behind them must be publicly brought to book. So, any other story? No, no other story. We have to go. Let me go have a coffee. Mm, we have to go. What's coming up at nine? A lecture. A lecture. Mm. What's the title of the lecture? Survivor in these turbulent times. Survivor. In what, what's the name of the course? In, in these turbulent times. Survivor in these turbulent times. In these, Matt Jekin Tabon, in, in, in these turbulent times. So, what's the name of the course? Zero, zero, 001. What is zero zero one? <laughs> so people, you know, you know. Let, let me let me tell you though. <laughs> let me tell you. Okay, so we have about two minutes. I, I can tell you. Um, I, I sat back, you know, taking in my experience as a student of history, taking in my experience as a student of history, and um, as a kid, relatively in secondary school, during the turbulent times of. 66 and 67 and now just oppose it with what happened in 93 you see what that astrologer astrologer papa told us there everything seems to be coming in place mm. and and i think we need to sensitive it's the least we owe our people for us to sit down and discuss how you will survive those times i'm not casting blame on anybody mm. no, i'm not i'm not i'm not interested in all that for now for now that will be well documented and i can assure you be it 10, 15, 20 years from now, mm. a lot of people are going to be paying for their actions and their speeches. But that's a story for another day. Yeah. But to, now what we need to do is to examine what, what as you know, like when you're in a plane and you see a dark cloud ahead, do you bypass it or do you go through it? Mm. That's what I'm going to be talking about at night. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank Lagos, thank you for joining us. All right. Let's take a break right now and head back to the crossfire. Stay with us. And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people what should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit you fire them those that need to be fired are fired it's looking like the brand new chelsea attacking with so much fluidity and what can you say about that martin i know you follow chelsea quite closely i live close to the chelsea training ground that's what you mean by that i'm not <laughs> a chelsea.